Childhood and Upbringing John Angelo Gotti, born as the progeny of the notorious John Gotti Sr., found himself in an environment where the distinction between legality and the criminal underworld was indistinct and often overlapping. His early years were a complex blend of affluence and vigilance, marked by the comforts and privileges of wealth alongside the constant awareness of the dangers and responsibilities inherent to his family's ties with organized crime. This duality permeated his upbringing, creating a paradoxical existence where the warmth and affection of a nurturing family life were perpetually under the shadow of his father's infamous legacy in the Mafia. John's life was a continuous navigation through these contrasting worlds, shaped by the expectations of his lineage and the inherent risks and moral ambiguities of being part of a family deeply entrenched in the underworld. My father was my cause. If my father wasn't in that life, I probably wouldn't have been in a street life either. A distinct fusion of familial intimacy and a pervasive sense of peril coexisted in the Gotti household. For young John Angelo Gotti, his father, John Gotti Sr., was a figure of both admiration and mystery. John Gotti Sr. was a man who elicited profound respect and fear embodying the dual roles of family patriarch and formidable figure in the criminal world. The streets of New York, resonant with hushed tales of his father's exploits, served as both a playground and a criminal classroom for John Angelo. Growing up, John Angelo was often by his father's side during visits to social clubs and business meetings, immersing himself in the intricacies of the criminal underworld. These experiences allowed him to observe the workings of organized crime closely. He saw firsthand the influence his father exerted over both made men and associates within the organization. From a young age, this exposure deeply influenced John Angelo's perception of authority and power, subtly nurturing his interest in potentially joining the family enterprise. The environment in which he was raised was rich with unspoken lessons about loyalty, respect, and the complex dynamics of power within the world of organized crime. My father lived that life 24-7, 24-7. In fact, his wife and kids were second to the streets. He loved it, he loved the code, he loved the action, he loved the chase. The teenage years. By his teenage years, John Angelo Gotti had cultivated a reputation as a tough and assertive young man, known for his readiness to resort to physical force to assert his point. He wholeheartedly embraced the perks and thrills that came with being a member of the Gotti family. The allure of designer clothes, fast cars, and revered status among his peers was intoxicating, fueling his burgeoning ego. However, this brash exterior masked a deeper awareness. John Angelo Gotti was acutely conscious of the constant risks and dangers that shadowed his father's life. He understood the precarious balance of power in the underworld, where trust was fragile and betrayal was a constant threat. The awareness that a single misstep or a trusted ally turning into an informant could topple the intricate empire his father had built was never far from his mind. These experiences, a blend of privilege and peril, luxury and risk, profoundly shaped John Angelo. The dichotomy of life in the Gotti family, moments of brilliance overshadowed by the looming threat of downfall, left a lasting impression on him, molding the character and path of the man he would eventually become. From Kid to Crime Boss as John Angelo matured, his role within his father's criminal empire expanded significantly. He was given increased responsibilities, starting with overseeing illicit gambling rackets and delving into the complex world of money laundering. This phase of his life was pivotal in learning the practical aspects of various criminal activities, understanding their intricacies and honing his skills in managing these clandestine operations. His ability to navigate these murky waters and his unwavering loyalty were continually put to the test as he climbed the ranks within the organization. The experiences during this time were not just about mastering the logistical aspects of crime, 
but also understanding and internalizing the rules of survival in the underworld. Key among these lessons were the importance of compartmentalization, keeping different aspects of the business separate to maintain security, and a deep-rooted distrust of outsiders. These principles were crucial in maintaining the secrecy and efficiency of their operations. These early lessons in leadership, discretion, and strategic thinking laid the groundwork for John Angelo's eventual ascent to a more prominent position within the organization. They shaped his approach to leadership, emphasizing caution, shrewdness, and a deep understanding of the complex web of relationships and power dynamics within the world of organized crime. The transition to head of the Gambino family seemed almost predestined for John Angelo. He'd been groomed from birth to walk in his father's footsteps. So when John Gotti Sr. was given a life sentence without parole in 1992 for murder and racketeering, the weight of the family name and its far-reaching legacy fell squarely upon his firstborn son's shoulders. Only 23 years old at the time, John Angelo nonetheless embraced this new mantle with a plum. To prevent discord, he met with all the captains and senior members immediately. The years spent at his father's side learning the levers of power smoothed the shift. He flooded the streets with assurances that it would be business as usual. The tight structure of the Mafia did not permit open internal challenges, and the desire for continuity kept grumblings at bay. Uncharted Waters Under John Angelo Gotti's stewardship in the 1990s, the Gambino family navigated choppy underworld waters. Pressures mounted both from within through the greed and competing interests of members, as well as from without by the relentless scrutiny of local and federal investigators. Rival families also sensed exploitable vulnerabilities in the changing of the guard, demanding constantly recalibrated responses. Utilizing lessons from his father, John Angelo ruled firmly but with some restraint. Understanding brute force alone risked destabilization or rebellion. Innovations included stock market pumps and dumps, internet frauds, and infiltrating construction contracts. Prudence generally took precedence over ego or vengeance regarding conflicts. The surgical removal of disruptive malcontents kept others in line as federal indictments piled up. For over a decade, John Angelo captained his family's criminal fortunes remarkably well, given his youth and the array of threats. However, the law was always encircling, applying suffocating pressure through wiretaps, informants, and persistent investigations. Eventually, in early 2008, the hammer dropped. A sweeping set of federal indictments named John Angelo as a central figure, leading to his arrest and conviction later that year for murder conspiracy and racketeering alongside various high-ranking associates. After years of dancing at the edges, he was sentenced to over six years behind bars. Prince to Prisoner Prison life for John Angelo Gotti was a stark contrast from his previous world of power and opulent privilege. Gone were the fine dining, bespoke suits, and high-stakes risks called for as a mafia don. Institutional food, uniform jumpsuits, and days and nights of mind-numbing monotony interspersed with lurking danger came in their place. For all his bravado, the rigors of incarceration were psychologically taxing. Yet, for John Angelo, prison also created space for self-reflection on his criminal past, impossible to cultivate on the outside. The pace slowed to permit deep introspection upon the layered realities beneath the criminal path chosen for him. Stripped of the accompanying glamour, excess, and ego gratification of Mafia life, its ultimate hollowness at core became clearer. He pondered on themes of destiny versus free will and recognized the strong gravitational pull his father's orbit still held on his decision-making. Changing Tides Concurrently, the operational dynamics of the Mafia itself were shifting in John Angelo's absence. Law enforcement pressure, particularly through the enhanced USA Patriot Act in 2001, 
had fragmented most old hierarchical structures, the cultural influences of Omerta and Blood Oaths binding leadership weakened amidst modern sensibilities. The once familiar landscape looked starkly different when John Angelo emerged in 2015 after serving over 80% of his sentence. Years removed, a man stepping back onto the streets of Brooklyn experienced significant disorientation. The person returning from prison faced dual challenges of cultural re-entry after incarceration as well as adapting to how the Mafia itself had radically changed. This precipitated an identity crisis for John Angelo, as hallmarks that had defined his name growing up were now eroded or mutated beyond familiarity. His reputation still carried weight in certain circles, but the next generation controlling the streets did not hold the same fealty to old codes or dynasties. This was a pivotal moment for John Angelo, with echoes of his past and assumptions about his future thrown into upheaval. Pressures pulled at him from all sides about how to reforge a path forward. After months of churn, the decisive voice emerged from within through a greater connection with his own authentic longings instead of external obligations. What clearly rose to the surface was a soul-deep yearning to shed the endless violence and deception characterizing his former criminal life. The never-ending drama, always looking over his shoulder, had exhausted itself of meaning. The emotional and physical tolls were no longer worth outward displays of power seen as empty compensation. Where is he now? Today, John Angelo Gotti's life is a testament to change and flexible adaptation. Equipped with wisdom gained from living deeply on both sides of legality and sanity, his choices now flow from a more enlightened ethical core instead of cultural inertia. He stands as a man who has seen the glittering heights of mob prestige yet equally endured ostracization and demonization when fortunes changed. This wider spectrum of experience emerging from past misdeeds nourished a more purified empathy about human complexity. No longer captive to external obligations, John Angelo's recent years have been marked by supporting youth charities to help at-risk kids avoid criminal pathways. He also consults police agencies, leveraging insight into Mafia psychology without compromising active cases. Focus is placed primarily on being present with family, appreciating the gift of watching his grandchildren grow up without violence overshadowing their innocence. In this ongoing journey from feared mobster to liberated ex-con seeking redemption, John Angelo Gotti's story remains compelling. His transformation continues to underscore how the imprint of our past need not remain a permanent cage. Instead, with courage and willingness to see from evolved lenses, new roots emerge, permitting people to rewrite the next chapters on their own terms.